Hi, I'm Laura, a Canadian cross-stitcher out of Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. Sometimes I follow a pattern and sometimes I follow my nose, finishing projects, rescuing abandoned projects, and generally stretching my creative boundaries. I never know what I'll be getting into next, but I'm happy to share the good, the bad, the ugly, and especially the funny. Welcome to my creative space. Hey, Floss Tube friends. I decided to make another project bag after a friend gifted me a completed needlepoint of Girl with a Pearl Earring she found in a thrift shop in Guelph. Uh, that's the city just next door to Cambridge. Back in my Floss Tube 5 video, I was thrifting in Sarnia, Ontario with my friends Lindsay and Louise, and we found a couple of goodies to take home. Uh, a cute hoodie that someone had hand embroidered, and my rescue cat. She's a cruel kit that has been partially started, um, and that's one I'm currently working on. The next weekend, Louise was browsing her local value village, and she couldn't resist checking out the craft section for me, now that she knows what kinds of projects I get up to. She found an Elsa Williams kit and this piece. We both thought Girl would make a great project bag. Now she's an entirely completed needlepoint from a kit. Um, some lovely stitchy friend out there spent a lot of time on this and I'm happy to have it. Um, there were a couple of minor issues with the white border being inconsistent all the way around and for some reason a random flesh tone dot in the black background, uh, but nothing I couldn't work with. I actually just pulled out the dot and replaced it with a few stitches of black floss and I figured I would stitch in a bit from the border all the way around. My usual first step was a tricky decision. She needed to be cleaned, but she was stitched onto a printed canvas and I didn't know if the ink would bleed everywhere. Um, but in the end I decided to risk it and I couldn't believe the amount of ink that washed out. So once it was dried, I could see that not all of the ink came out and the darker ink had caused the white on her collar to go gray. So I crossed my fingers and I washed her again. Uh, but once she was dry, I was happy enough with the outcome, so I went ahead with making some measurements for my new project bag. I decided that 10 by 13 were good round numbers to work with. Now I knew from my black work project bag that I liked the size of the bag, so I went with about 20 by 23 as my finished bag size. Um, so if my needlework length is 13 and my bag is 23, that leaves 10 inches for the remaining pieces. I had decided to add a banner with some additional cross stitch lettering at the top and bottom. Uh, more on that story later in the video. And I wanted to have a border of a fun fabric around the top, the bottom and the sides and a contrasting fabric at the bottom. So that leaves two inches for the top, two inches for the bottom, and then four inches for the contrasting fabric at the bottom. And if my needlework width is 10 and my bag is 20, that leaves five inches for each side piece. And of course, adding a half inch seam allowance to all the pieces. Once I had my measurements, it was off to lens mill fabric. And if you haven't been before, Lens has a huge selection of quilting fabrics, all organized by theme. Now I knew I was looking for something along the lines of like um, artists or painting or uh, frames or framed art or things like that. Um, but I also want to show you a little bit more of what else they have there. Uh, if you like fabric, this is the place. Um, do you like to knit or crochet maybe instead? They've got a good selection of yarn too. And they have a little bit of stuff for cross stitching like Ada and Floss. Um, and their prices are usually better than Michael's. I did a quick zigzag around the needlework to stop the fraying and then pinned on the side panels. I stitched them in place, gave them a little press and then top stitched the edges. I think stitching in from the edges a bit was the right choice. Just look at this awesome paintbrush fabric I found. Next, I stitched on the strips of lettering I added above and below the needlepoint. I needed to add a bit extra to the edges to get the right width, uh, and then I top stitched it. At first, I thought some white top stitching would look great on the black, but it was a disaster. The stitches were uneven and higgledy piggledy, and I, I just didn't like it. So I got out my stitch ripper and carefully pulled it out. 
This was so painful because it was hard not to snag the black yarn of the needle point and accidentally rip it too. But once I got that done, I pinned on the top and bottom paintbrush fabric, uh, stitched it, pressed it, and then top stitched it before adding on the bottom contrasting fabric, which I pinned, stitched, pressed, and top stitched as well. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. The backing was really simple. Just a piece of paintbrush fabric sandwiched by the contrasting fabric at the top and the bottom. To add a bit of weight and structure to the bag, I cut a piece of fleece from an old blanket I had and some gray broadcloth I had in my fabric stash for the inside lining. If I don't have quilted fabric on hand, I usually don't bother to buy any. I just use what I have and run it through the sewing machine a few times to hold the layers together. Ugh, bobbin winding. Who likes bobbin winding? Okay, so here's where things take an unexpected turn. Before I can quilt up the front piece, I need to add a little something to the needle point. I found it easiest to pop it into one of my DIY Q-snaps so the fabric wouldn't flop around on me. But what the heck am I doing? <laughs> okay, so let me tell you what happened on the way to making this project bag. Back when Louise texted me about this piece, it coincided with a workplace get-together we had. Um, Lindsay, Louise and I are not just friends, we all work together. We are learning specialists at our company, and we periodically get together to do uh, work on improving our services, but also to have some fun bonding time. And the thing is, we all have the same black backpack from our company to carry our laptops and things. But they all look the same, and the last time we were together, I accidentally put my reading glasses into Louise's bag. So Louise texted me like the next day um, to let me know, and she put the needlework and the glasses on her dresser to remember to bring them to me in the next few days. And then I got this text from her that changed everything. I was just walking by my dresser and saw your cross-stitch gift and your glasses together, and they only need the slightest adjustment for this. I call it the girl with the pearl earring and poor vision. I laughed so hard when I saw that. But then I thought how it would be even funnier if I ran with it and made a bag just like it. So the next thing I knew, I was taking the glass out of an old pair of frames, cutting off the arms, and looking for some Ada cloth to do some lettering. Don't hate me for this. I'm sure there will be some of you out there horrified with what I've done to this lovely piece of needlework, but I just can't help myself. Anyways, so next I added extra layers uh, and quilted the front just like I had done the back. Um, then I took some of the contrasting fabric to make straps for the handles. I just folded it over a couple of times, pressed it, and stitched it. And then I folded in the edges at the top of the front and the back pieces, uh, gave them a press, and then stitched in the handles. Then I put the front and back pieces together, stitched the edges, trimmed them, and zigzagged the edges all the way around to prevent uh, any fraying inside the bag. And here she is. I call her girl with the pearl earring and poor vision. She's surrounded by paintbrushes and the contrasting fabric on the handles and at the bottom is made up of all these little pairs of glasses. I had so much fun planning this project and probably looked like a crazy person sometimes chuckling to myself when I thought about what she'd turn out like. And she does not disappoint. I can't wait to share this with Louise and I'm hoping you got a bit of a chuckle out of it too. I'm genuinely sorry if you are horrified with what I've done but also not very sorry for what I've done. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if I should hang for this um, and subscribe for more if you can't wait to see what other nonsense I get up to next. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.